Welcome to One Name Studies Project on Wiki Tree Day 2023. My name is Sandy, and we have with us project leaders, Azure and Amy, that are going to talk to us a little bit about the One Name Studies, what you can do to help, as well as what you can do to start one. How are you ladies doing today? Good. How are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. This is the exciting one for me, and I think this might be how everybody kind of takes their genealogy research one step further. I think this might be that one step further because who doesn't love their surname mostly? Everybody's like, well, I want to know my surname. I want to research it. I want to know more about it. And the best way to do it is one name studies. And I'm so glad that you guys are here because you guys are going to show us exactly how we do that. There might be an existing study that we can volunteer with or help with. So I'm really curious because there's a lot of different ways we can approach this. And I think the best thing to do is let's start with the project page. And Amy, what is a one name study and why should I worry about it? <laughs> well, one name studies focus on uh, a surname, uh, which everyone has now. Um, and the idea is to um, trace it back and try and figure out the name, whether it's a patronymic or a matronymic, uh, maybe it's an occupational name, uh, maybe you assumed someone else's name. Um, and that's a good question because when we talk about one name studies there, I get a lot of questions about, should it only be the people who were born with that last name? And as you know, this is a very cultural world where things are changing. We have adoptees. We have marriages that come in. We we have, um, you know, some surprise DNA through our called um, MPEs, not the parent expected. So mm -hmm. what, what name should I use or who should be included in a name? Does it matter? It does and it doesn't. Um, so, for example, if you're adopted into a family and you're using a surname, then you should be included. Um, if you are married into a family and your children use that surname, then you should be included. Um, I have a, a, an example. Um, a member of my family, when he married his wife, uh, took her surname and so their children have her surname. Um, so they're all included in my study. It just shows a different way that people are living their lives. Exactly. The, the study really is going to be what you make it. Yeah. So if you want to include just the last name at birth, and let's take your example of the gentleman that married. What was his original name, last name at birth? Uh, McPherson. And then he married into a? Crawford. Family. So he took Crawford, but yeah. I could actually see where he could be in both. That's if, right. If, if the researcher really wanted to do that, they could say this was his official last name at birth. Uh, and then also he married, decided to take the married name yeah. and do that. We, we see that obviously more with women than, than men. Exactly. exactly. But I think that the project really is what are you researching? If you have a goal of what you're researching, then that will answer your questions for you. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, if you're not sure, ask in G2G, ask the project leaders or another project coordinator. Everybody has their own way of uh, organizing things. So and I someone's think you, happy to help. You just said one of the biggest tips of all of Wikitree. You know, a lot of times we will go to G2G, but guess what? If you go straight to your project leader or your project coordinator, they're the ones that have a passion and a love or the project that you're in exactly. and they also have the answers really, really quick. So I would, I always tend to go to project leaders and project coordinators first mm -hmm. because I know that they know the ins and outs of this project and they've seen the ways other people have done it. 
as exactly. well. And we're going to take a look at studies in just a minute, but let's tell you a little bit about how to join this project. As with all Wikitree projects, when you go to the main project page, you'll see a box that's colored in orange or green, as this one is. And there's always going to be an answer or G2G post. All you got to do is click on it. Once you click on that link, make sure to read the instructions on that welcome post. It will give you details on what information that the project needs to get started. Okay. And I think there are only three per wiki trier That's that right. allowed. So three one name studies that you can manage, but you can be on a, as a member of many. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And the reason for that is it's really hard when you're doing work all over Wikitree um, and you get requests for information or how do I do this or how do I do that? Limiting it to three projects that you're trying to respond to re regularly, um, it makes it a little less overwhelming. So but obviously you can help out in as many as you like. And what it would be the difference between managing and being a member? So um, being a coordinator means you have specific responsibilities, like answering posts uh, about that name study. Um, oh, responding to G2G questions. Um, and I imagine you get a lot of questions, too, for people who do want to be a member, and maybe they're not sure where where to go. I, I could tell you that my last name at birth is Craig and I'm based in the States, but as my um, one brother will tell you, he, he is Scottish through and through, was not born there, but he's Scottish through and through. So, you know, there might be somebody from Scotland with that last name at birth that maybe wants to take over that research. And I, I think would a, will the coordinator be able to coordinate all the work being done so there's not duplication? Yeah, that's what the coordinator would, would take care of is coordinate the workflow and who's going to work on what and how are we going to organize the research pages and exactly. how to go about it and all that. And then, so before I start, what should I really know? How much, how much information should I get into? Is it just creating a page? Do I create the page? Do I just say, okay, I, I joined, let me go just start creating the page and, and oh, what about a sticker? Do I create my own sticker? How's, how's all that work? Um, so when you answer the join post, Jacqueline is usually the one that will answer you. Um, and sh either her or myself will set up the project page for you um, and create the sticker uh, so that it works properly. Um, and yeah. So some people, cool. some people set up their own and then, I mean, they get excited. I get that. Um, but then sometimes there's work for us to do. We have to go in and fix things. So, yeah, there's kind of behind the scenes work that needs to happen to make it so that when you're on that surname page for whatever surname you're interested in, it will point to the study page. So exactly. there, there are things that need to happen. So that's why it's, uh, really needs to be the project leadership that sets those up for you. Yeah. And you guys know what to do, you know, as opposed to having 50 of us create our own, there might already be one there. Yeah, and we just exactly. it. There might be one that we could volunteer for that needs, needs a coordinator, but also there's a lot of uh, wiki code, things like that behind the scenes that you guys know that 50 of us, if we started our own, we would come up with 50 different pages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it makes sense to just go to the GTG, click on that welcome link to get there and answer the questions that you have on the GTG post. And you guys will take it from there and set up the background. And then that lets us do a little bit of customization with it. But we know the root and the, the background all connect together throughout Wikitree and it's one yeah. stop shopping. You guys do it for us. So let's talk about a little bit about the customization. So now that I've got a one place study from you, we're going to show you 
multiple examples of what you can do. And these next examples are really amazing because they hit different ideas that wiki traders have come up with. And this shows the creativity of wiki traders, but it also we will notice, I'll say this again throughout this, the power of Wikitree really is the collaboration amongst the people, but the collaboration amongst the projects as yeah. well. I might know my last name, but I guarantee you I do not do research in Scotland. So I could actually have somebody who's on the Scotland project join my last name, my one name study, and help. This is... That's like a double dipping of the project in the members collaboration. And I can't wait to show you guys these. And Azure and Amy have come up with some great examples. The very first one that we should probably talk about is the bald one example. And I'm going to tell you why this one is really important after you guys explain it. So the bald one is a really good example of a, a really good start for what you guys put behind the scenes. I mean, you guys put all our categories, you name it for us. And then the study coordinator comes in and adds all this verbiage and text, right? Um, most of it, yeah. So um, we have a standard um, template that we use for all study pages, um, which can be customized. Um, and it is... Uh, so you'll see like anywhere where it's highlighted with links or it says Baldwin in this case, um, we'll go in and, and make sure it all says the right surname. Um, then when you get down to the, um, so like Baldwin related surnames and surname variants, anything after that is kind of customized by the, the coordinator. They can add what they, what their research track is, uh, any additional pages that relate to the study, that kind of thing. And all these images come from the person who started or created or a member I'm of member, yeah. the one named study for this particular one. This one's really great because it shows how somebody actually took a study that was existing. They needed a coordinator. A coordinator uh, no longer was a part of the study. And somebody came in, took this, and added to it. That's right. And not only just added stickers for the names, but uh, the, the pictures and the information in the sources as we're going through this. Um, I do know that this is pretty cool that Carol, who took this over, also brought in another project, the Puritan Great Migration Project, because that's where they went. And that's what she was researching at the time and wanted to connect her last name to this. So I think that's really great that she's working with other projects as well. And, and then the stickers are just the standard. These particular ones are just the standard wiki tree stickers. But keep in mind that this particular sticker is a template that is made when you request your study. You That's don't make it, it's made for you. If you want to customize it, there are instructions how to do that. And I, I will point out too, that there is a research party during the Wikitree day. I believe it's Saturday that Azure is going to be there on Zoom. So if anybody wants to change their sticker and customize it to a logo, <laughs> a picture, you know, the big B that you see here, Azure's going to actually be on Saturday the 4th from, is it 1 to 2, I think? 2 to 4. 2 to 4. 2 to 4. And if you have any questions about One Name Study, One Play Study, that would be a good place to jump into Zoom because she can help you work through and also customize your sticker. I'm going to guess that customizing the sticker is probably one of the big requests. <laughs> it is. And very easy to do. And Azure will walk you right through it on Wikitree Saturday for the symposium. So you'll love it. And I want to thank Carol, too, because we're showing this particular study again, because I know that Carol kind of volunteers stepped in when this was one that didn't have a particular coordinator or members. And when we talk about that, let me show you some that do currently need 
coordinators with. So as we just go through the first page, there's some really, really common exactly. names. Like Adam, Alexander, um, I think even like Biddle and Bell. Bell is a very yeah. common name too. Um, Colby. There's there's so many common names. And this is just the first page. This is just showing you some A's and B's and C's. So if you see a name on this particular page, it will make sure that we'll have it in the description below. And you want to know more about your name and maybe connect with other wiki treers to know more about your name and research it, then this is a great way. This study, these studies here, they are already set up. They're, yeah, they're ready to go. They just, they just need you to come and to volunteer to, to coordinate them. And I'll just pick one. We'll pick the Ashley name and you can see that somebody did work on this. They're, you know, a lot of good information, but whenever you come to one name study page and you see this big green study coordinator needed, just reach out. And how do you do that? You go to the project page, the G2G link and say, I want to join. And this is really great. So sometimes you'll find ones that have full information like this. And sometimes you'll find them where they just have the basic information. All right. Okay, let's move on and talk about a really well done study that also shows you how you can help work some of the unconnected, the unsourced or database errors. This is from Mel, who created the wolf name study. And I think, Azure, this one's kind of cool too, because Mel does a really good job of explaining the project, but also these related surnames. And yeah. I Bet that's a big question too. So if I had W-O-L-F as my name, and then the next person behind me comes in and says, well, my name is spelled W-U-L-F-F, -F, <laughs> that would not be two different place, uh, one name studies, correct? That would be all the same? Right. Yeah. So uh, that's something that we ask for in um, when you when you ask to join the project and you want to start a name study, we we ask that what variants are you wanting to focus on, um, so that we can add that. Um, that's kind of what we were talking about the setup behind the scenes, mm -hmm. um, setting it up so that those surname pages link to the study page, so we can do that for three surnames. So um, that this is a really good example, but also. Um, what you can do too, what well, we have um, some studies that have lots of different spellings like this, and um, maybe there are different studies that are have the similar spellings and they kind of want to link up. So you mm -hmm. just link the pages so that they kind of, you know, so, so the people, when they go to the page, they can see that, okay, that that's, that's under this page and that's under this page, the different, you know, wolf with a U versus wolf with an O. And I think that's important too, because if you have two surnames that are similar, but they are different in two different coordinators, that's just another way you could collaborate. Yeah, it is really share the work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also it, it's there. So if somebody's working on one and says, oh, I've got a variation, let me go create another one name study. Oh, nope, don't need to. It's already there. Yeah. Now, the other interesting thing about this, I really love the way that she breaks it down into the countries, too. I feel almost like I'm looking at my own DNA and what type of DNA I have here, even <laughs> though this is not a DNA study that we're showing here. We're going to show you one. But I like how it shows the countries because, as you know, WikiTree is a global community and somebody could jump in from, say, Brazil and say, I do have one of those variations and they can show their line and how they connect back and connect to each other and to other wolves with different name variations. So it's kind of yeah. really cool that she does that. I like that a lot. And this is a good way. I think you guys put this on the template for every one name study. And I really love it. You can see that even though there's a coordinator, there's lots of members. Yeah, exactly. And I really like them all over. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I was going to say, I really like how they tell you exactly where they're researching. I mean, this is fantastic. So you've got Australia, you've got Netherlands and Germany, you've got Wisconsin in Germany, and then you're going back to colonial times. So this is really cool. And, and, and this one's really great. 
they're just researching one particular area that they're looking at. So it, it kind of ties it all back in. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so I can show you one last thing with this particular um, one name study that I love. So once you have a one name study and you might add stickers and or the category, depending on, on your usage to a profile and think that's it. But look at this. Um, this particular coordinator gives us the unconnected, the unsourced, the suggestions and the orphans. Mm -hmm. And if you have, want to mention them on G2G, all you got to do is click on that green link for that particular spelling. And that will take you to G2G where you can ask a question. Now, this is great. If you have unconnected and you got a connected thon, go to your one name study. And yeah. same for, for unsourced and suggestions. We're always working suggestions, no matter where we are. So <laughs> I, I like I like the way that she has this one um, kind of spelled out. Okay, this was a really, really great one. This one was, let me scroll back up again. This one was the wolf name study. And then let's move over to something that is a little bit different. This particular study, the wedding to name study, is extremely detailed. The PC, the coordinator, excuse me, for this one is Eric. And Eric spends, I know, a lot of time on his study. He really wants to research his origins from the United States. So he's focusing on who were the first instances of his name in the United States. And as you can see, as we scroll down, so he's got some from North Carolina, from Kentucky and Virginia, as well as some inner names, marriages that have married into this particular wedding, na uh, Weddington name, excuse me. But the one thing I wanted to show you that I thought was really cool, let me scroll all the way down, is the oldest in the United States. So that's what this focus is on. I do know that Eric, uses this particular one name study, whether it's your last name at birth or if you married into it. So that's an option that he has for this particular one, because again, he's trying to trace and source some very, very old ancestors that sometimes we do not have a lot of documentation for in the sources. And leaving this here gives somebody a chance to trace their ancestors back that may have the same name or similar name, especially if they married into it. And you can see where he's given the links and he kind of gives you the idea of where they have migrated to as well. The oldest in Virginia, Kentucky, the oldest going through. He also has a table of not connected yet. These are connected to the oldest families of this particular one name study in the United States which is kind of cool. If you remember this um, one name study, you could just jump in and, yeah. and pick one of these links that he has and get started. There's something sad about getting that column and saying connected. You know, there's just something really, yeah. really cool. About <laughs> exactly. I love the names too. The names are, are, are extremely varied. Okay. One other thing I want to talk about, about Eric's that is really amazing is he also mentions the black American families because he has some that were on plantations that did assume the name. So working with the U S black heritage project, the U the U S B H project is another way that he's collaborating and bringing this through. So we had Carol that worked with, you know, more of a Puritan group. And then now we have Eric working with USBH. I, I will know. I think that the one name studies just could touch so many it does. projects. Yeah. It, it, we like to assume that, that we go from here back straight to Scotland, for example, if you're my brother, but no, you, <laughs> your name travels the globe yeah so this is really cool and this is another way that you can jump in and help so if this is a particular area of research that you know very well then you can jump in and help i i think it's important to note here and we'll say it again at the end a one name study and a one place study usually are never completed exactly right a one yeah. place study might be for ghost towns, but a one name study usually is never ever completed. 
that's a really good point too, Sandy, that um, even if the person who's currently coordinating a study, if they have to leave Wikitree or they unfortunately pass away or for some other reason can't continue to coordinate it, all of that information stays when a new coordinator takes over. That's a good point. You don't wipe the page. You exactly. don't start from scratch. That's right. They can just pick up and continue on. And I think that's really cool to know that you're continuing the work. You know, I can understand that you might change some things on the page if you're the new coordinator, move things around. But yeah. you know that the, the hardcore basis of the work for this example is there and you can pick up and continue it. And isn't that what we really want all our descendants to do? Exactly. Well, is to take an interest in our work and then carry it through. And because WikiTree is free, that allows us just to jump in at any time. Oh, but let's talk next about one of Amy's. <laughs> Bill Crawford, tell us a little bit about why you started this. Well, I was born in Crawford. And growing up, I had no idea where I came from. <laughs> My family didn't talk about it. Um, I had no idea uh, whether we were Native, which had been tossed around. There was some questions about who where the Crawfords came from. Um, and when I was about 12, I was told about some research that was being done in the Crawford family. And probably when I was about 15, I was handed a book and said, this is where you come from. <laughs> and I looked at it and I went, mm, that's can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing research and when I found Wikitree, I was like, this is the perfect place for my research. Oh, that's what it is. So yeah, uh, we discovered that most Crawfords, not all, but most will come from Scotland. Um, taking their name from uh, uh, the land that they owned at the time um, that was called Crawford. Um, and of course, as we know, Scots have spread out worldwide. They're everywhere. <laughs> and they really are. And I'm glad you're showing this one because, you know, we laugh a lot of times amongst ourselves and probably to ourselves that it's very popular to be a Scot. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of the probably the common things that people get into genealogy for is determine what their heritage is. And am I Scottish? Do I wear a kilt? You know, so I'm <laughs> glad that we're showcasing this particular Scottish one name study, because, as you know, with people wanting to be something, sometimes you just can't make that work. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, I know that you've you've had a lot of work researching with this contentious and conflated lineages. And we were just talking about collaboration with projects. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these have come to my attention through various state projects with the United States project. Really? That's yeah. interesting. So they're like, um, we're, you know, having some trouble sorting this line out. Can you help? And so... That's how a lot of this came about, um, trying to, uh, you know, prove or disprove that we don't start out with, uh, you know, oh, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. We start out with what can we find to support or not support this claim. And uh, the biggest one, the one I've had the most fun with is the, the Waxaws uh, and the Hutchinson lineages. Uh, they were kind of cool. Um, Let's bring that. And I think that it is important again to mention that on Wikitree, we do use sources. Yeah. You know, we, we don't make assumptions. And if there is a story passed down, we'll include it. That's but right. we, also want, we also want some proof. We want exactly. Proof. We want you, take, proof. you take the information from the story and you try to find sources to support it. Or you come to the conclusion that mm, that can't be supported. And I will tell so. you that some of my favorite finds in, have been when somebody's chainsawed my tree. <laughs> and said, no, 
you know, that you, you're not related to this particular Crawford line. You are the, this one, though, maybe. But you, but if exactly. they didn't chainsaw my tree, I would still be stuck on the wrong branch. Yeah. Um, we weren't even sure that uh, James Crawford, as, as that's spelled, uh, was even part of the Crawford surname. Um, but going back, there were actually documentation of it spelled properly. <laughs> it this is a great example too of how you have your one name page that you created the project has created but you can have these supplemental pages and we're going to show you a few exactly. of these this is one that was probably very contested a large group of people probably believe this path and so you took a, a space page and created the research for it and the thing that i love is you've got the conclusions listed it's been a long time since i've looked at that page but um and even this like i the, i'm going to assume that pennsylvania or ireland and there's there's no source but people were saying no it's pennsylvania no it's probably ireland and going back and forth and if, if you don't have the source then you say it but the great thing is you were able to do this because somebody's taking the last name and carrying it through and not maybe sourcing it but going off what they think is somebody else said is true and you're going through and researching it and documenting it and that's the beauty of a one name study as well and with this conflated line like they were originally the line does come from scotland originally but it passed through ireland and it was trying to determine which family member in that line was the first one to come to you then to the United States. And when they got here, where were they? Were they in Virginia? Were they in Pennsylvania? Were they? So it can get very interesting. And I think for you to create this separate page where you can really get into details and talk about the conclusions and the discussions, how you got to the conclusions, your sources, your notes for this particular family mm -hmm. helps make it easier to read, clears it up a little bit. If you put all these kind of crazy fictitious lines all on the one name study page, they might get lost. But exactly by creating this little separate area here, that makes it real handy to see and go through. And that's the other thing too. If you come across another one that, um, you know, that needs to be looked into because mm -hmm. you're not sure if it's right or not, um, then we can add that. And it makes it nice too, because then you can then now reference that page as kind of a source of itself because you've done all the research and outlined all the information there. Exactly. So. You know, and that's a really great point. How many times have we wished that we had something that could prove or disprove? And we wish we had all the the behind the scenes discussion. Sometimes we just get the sources. Mm -hmm. But you're so right, Azure, because we can use that page as our entire source because it has every step that we went through to prove and disprove. That's a great tip. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about, you know me. Again, Appalachia, we do family reunions. Asher showed me this page, and I instantly fell in love with this page. This is the Turrentine or Turrentine? I think it's, I'm not sure. Turrentine is what I thought, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I haven't actually heard it said, so. <laughs> and we're talking about supplemental pages, and this is actually a supplemental page that is hanging off of the name study. So tell us what this page is. I love it. I love the photos. Yeah. So they have a, a fairly consistent um, biannual, it looks like, um, family reunion that they have. And so they have all these images that they don't want to get lost or damaged or whatever. They wanted to have somewhere to put it. So they came to Wikitree and they're getting it all uploaded here. So that it's available to all their members and to the family and it can live on then for everybody. I think I, that's awesome. I think this is just so amazing. I love this because who hasn't been to at least one or two 
reunions, whether it's a family reunion, a high school reunion, a college reunion, it could be your, you know, bike club reunion, whatever. We've all <laughs> been to something like this and taking pictures. And, you know, now we can say, oh, make sure to send me that picture, text me that picture. But back in the day, it wasn't like that. It exactly. was just one photograph. And to try and get a copy of it was pretty near impossible. It wasn't something that was done, especially let's scroll back up. Imagine getting, you know, a copy of the photograph of these individuals to each of them at the time this photo was taken. So it was kind of challenging and difficult. And that's why I love this because who doesn't love looking through pictures, <laughs> especially if it's attached to your name and you get to see these people and you might not know them. They might be from all the way across the world, but you might look at them and say, oh, I got, you know, I got that guy's nose. Or I got that guy's nose. <laughs> and you start to feel this kinship towards them. I, I do know that I think with any genealogist, and you guys um, tell me your thoughts on this. We love sources, but I think we love pictures more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hate to admit it. You know, it all kind of starts with a picture for me. If I see a picture... I'm invested. Yeah. And I've got to create the biography and find the sources for these people and connect them as yeah. well. And again, WikiTree allows you to do that. I did not know this was up here until you showed me this. <laughs> and awesome. I, I totally am in love with this page. Look at all mm -hmm. these years that they have. They have all these years where someone has collected the photos and also made sure that we know the names. Love that. I mean, <laughs> love. how many times you get a picture and like, I have no clue. <laughs> I did that just the other day. I know. I looked, so I looked at an old family reunion picture and went, who are half these I people? Don't <laughs> I don't know. But thankfully we know these people because this family has wow. done all the documentation and look, it goes up to this year. It's awesome. This yeah. goes all the way up to this year. Those um, have, yeah, they haven't been that added yet, but yeah, that's the that's the project is to get them all up there. And this is something that if you are working with a one name study and maybe you're really good at identifying the people based on the number, you know, kind of the number game and maybe creating the space pages that attach to the name study or maybe uploading the photos and getting those profiles, initial profiles created. This is a great way that you could just be a, a help, a member of the yep. one name study as well. And then I, I'm, I believe it's Joyce that owns this particular, manages this particular name study. And then she can go in and say, yes, this was this person. And she can add in some biographies because she knows the individuals as well. Right. Yeah. This is a treasure. This is truly, truly a treasure. And I hope anybody that's watching this right now will go to their photo albums next weekend, not this weekend, we're <laughs> next weekend, and look and think about a one name study and see if there is one available that needs a coordinator or needs help as a member and start collecting photos and adding them up to a supplemental page. Again, the one name study page was created by the project for us. And yeah. this particular individual decided to put up all their photograph. We get territorial photographs, you know, we've all heard it and seen it. Sometimes in other places, people get real territorial, but again, WikiTree is free and Joyce is saying, here they are, here are, here are the people. So I really love that too. Okay, let's talk about something a little bit more detailed now. Let's say that you have your name study, but you really want to dig into a little bit more detail with this. You want to really research the science out of it. This Peasley study is a really good one because it's a DNA project as well, right, Azure? Yeah, so this, and this is an example of what I was talking about before where there's more surnames <laughs> attached. So at the top there, uh, back oh, up yeah. at the top, you'll see that it's kind of connected the Paisley name study and the Peasley name study go together um, because the surnames are all part of the Paisley DNA group project that's out there on uh, Family Tree DNA. And so we have a Pais Paisley DNA group project page. And um, Mags is actually, Mags Galton is doing a presentation about DNA group projects on WikiTree that 
anybody who's interested in that should check out. So across the top of this page, you can see all the different surnames that are attached to this Paisley DNA group project. We've got the, the tags there for those. Um, so it's, it's fairly detailed out on FTDNA, and then we've kind of outlined it a little bit here too. And this, how it breaks out. this is really great because if you want to get a little bit deeper and go a little bit further and get into the science of genealogy, which really DNA is that, then you can create a space page. You're still hanging it off of your main one name study. This is just a supplemental page, it, just a different one. We saw one with the photographs. We saw one from Amy's with the a research of lines, and now we're seeing one with DNA. So one name studies can really be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, it's how far you want to take it and um, where you where you want it to go, where, how you want to research it. So it's really very interesting and cool and being able to <laughs> key in with other projects at Wikitree and really take it there. Exactly. Especially, too, when you're talking a little bit with the DNA and the science of it, this particular box is the one I was trying to get to. This is awesome because this shows your haplogroups as well. And you can kind of start to see the comparison. You can see the locations of these names as well. Uh, it's, it's just a really, really well done detailed DNA study. Now, do you need to do a detailed DNA study? That's up to you. But if you want to get started, I highly recommend it because, again, we have a wiki tree, a DNA project, and they yeah. would be glad to help you and come in. And it, as mentioned, one of my favorite Appalachians, Mags, who I kind of go to for any DNA question that I can't figure out. She would love to help you and explain why you would want to do this and how to get started just on the basic level. So if you know a little bit about DNA and you want to just start, feel free. If you know a lot about DNA, feel free. Dig in. And there's always help. There, that's that the is, one thing that's great about Wiki. It's all about collaboration. That's what it's all Everything about WikiTree is. And if you're collaborate. like me and oh. don't know much about DNA, you should recruit someone who does know. There you <laughs> go. Jonathan, <laughs> Jonathan Crawford looks after our DNA stuff and he's awesome. <laughs> That's a really, really great point because he's a member on your Crawford One Name Study. So that's you right. have that. And that's one area that he can just have fun with. Exactly. And then you can have somebody that just does the photos. And maybe you got somebody that just works at the suggestions for your name as well. It'll clean up any errors or connect or source. So that's really a great point, Amy. Okay, now let's move on. This one is kind of interesting. Now, Amy mentioned something earlier. If you no longer can coordinate and manage your one name study that you set up, and you decided it's just too much work for me right now, you know, with, with kids in events or if your job is taking over more of your time and you're not allowed to wiki tree as much and you decide to turn over your one name study to somebody who can give it a little bit more love than you can. Like Amy said, everything's there. We're, they're not wiping it clean. Everything's there. But then we have another case, don't we, Azure, that comes up that what happens if there is no one to take over your one name study or one place study. We'll throw that in there as well. You've spent so much time. You've lovingly given a lot of research time to this. It's, it's something that's important to you because it's your legacy. So that is something that one name study has come across. Yeah. So we had uh, someone reach out to us that they had 40 years research um, in this, in their name study. And so they wanted to, um, make it available for free, make sure it was a for free, um, and available out there. So they didn't want it to be lost. So we, uh, worked with that person and migrated a lot of the information. Um, if you go to the name study page, you'll see, uh, their research or supplemental pages for some of the information um, that uh, she had gathered over the years. Lots and lots of scans of original documents. So 
those all exist now. There we go. The Duggleby research page is like kind of the main page and it links into all these scans and documents um, that are out that are available for for research and as source sources basically. So there's yes. a lot and lot of information. There, I know have. I'm looking through this. This is tremendous amount of just document and research. But if you look at the dates, this is going back to some hardcore dates going in and really digging in probably to the location itself is mm -hmm. some of the stuff might not even be online. Yeah. yeah. So what couldn't be um, added necessarily to WikiTree just because the files were so big um, are have been migrated to a cloud drive. So just, you know, there's so much information out there that was, that was done and um, available and we wanted to make sure it stayed available. And this is really special. This was, this is something that I just learned of myself. And this is really kind of special to see that someone's work will continue mm -hmm. and it's not behind a paywall. Exactly. Right. And this is another example where, as Amy said, if you want to come in and dig in and pick up where somebody left off, these legacy ones are a great way to continue honoring yeah. the person who put in all this work. It, it, it These names will go on forever. Yeah. And we're still migrating uh, or creating the profiles, the 5,000 plus profiles. So that's still work that is being done and we can always use more help with. So <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, it, it's still a work in progress, but it's, it's kind of, that's what WikiTree is all about. You know, volunteers uh, pitching in and, helping out and it really is it, it this one takes on just kind of a little special more you know knowing that that somebody trusted all of us to kind of look after it take out not only you know take care of it and look after it, but also continue it so i i think this is a really great idea i think it's really awesome that this particular person trusted WikiTree to do this knowing that it would be available we were laughing a little bit before we started that as we know with documents they could get lost in the mail lost in a box you know you put it in your basement your basement floods you know your cat uses it for you know their necessaries there's so <laughs> many different things i could tell you that all my paper documentation if i didn't have it online i'm pretty sure my son would not know in, <laughs> when I'm gone, it would it would go yeah. too. So yeah. <laughs> so think about this as you go through and you work on your your place studies and your name studies. Think about using WikiTree as a fantastic resource for your legacy. Yeah, exactly. Well, that pretty much gives us the whole tour of the one name studies. Did we miss anything? Do we leave anything out? I don't think so. I don't think so. the only thing I would say is that if you're interested in starting a one name study, um, you can go, I don't know if it's linked on the uh, project page or not, but you can always go out and just check out some studies that are already out there. Exactly. Um, see what people are doing and um, kind of get an idea of what, what you would like to do with yours. And I think that's how we kind of found these studies as well. Some of them we work on and some of them we've, we've seen and the studies we've shown you are kind of, we just found them ourselves as yeah. we go along. So definitely join the one name studies group. Just go to the project page, click on that G2G welcome post. You might be surprised. There might be one already set up that is waiting for you to take it over it is a coordinator so you never know just step right on up and take it from there you can also go to g2g and ask for members help and volunteer and recruit members as well once the study's there make of it what you would like do you want to include just the last name at birth or do you want to include the married or married into families do you want to have the variations and what variations are those this is just whatever you want to make of it and bring your passion for your name yeah. to WikiTree's One Name Studies. <laughs>
Okay, ladies. I thank you for joining us for Wiki Tree Day 2023. This has been great. Thanks and if anybody has any questions, you know who to contact. Then the information will be in the description down below. So that's a wrap. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.